go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the time that we have to come here to listen to your word. Hide me behind the shadow of the cross, Lord, that the words I speak, the meditation of all of our hearts, it will be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, and you are our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> So we're going to dive right back into our gospel passage from today. It's a section from the Apostle John's gospel where we learn about the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we also learn in this, uh, this section of the gospel of John about some of the signs and wonders that Jesus performed. And we actually uh, read about, uh, Chad read about one of those earlier. So in the passage, we have the story of Jesus and his friends, Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus. And we know from the sacred scriptures that there was a familial, I'd like to think of it as like a close familial type relationship between Jesus and these friends. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived in a town called, or a village I think really it speaks of, uh, called Bethany, which was approximately two miles from Jerusalem. And so it's believed that during the daytime Jesus would go to Jerusalem when he was in that area do the temple work, and then at nighttime would go back and he would stay with his friends there in Bethany. Um, so prior to our passage for today, Jesus had gone to the area on the banks of the Jordan River where his cousin, whom we refer to as John the Baptist, where John had been baptized. In the meantime, the friend Lazarus had become ill and he eventually died, or the scriptures say he fell asleep, uh, meaning that he was asleep in death. So word was sent to Jesus about Lazarus, but he decided to wait a few days uh, and he, because he would use this as an opportunity to elevate his power and presence, but to also increase the faith of his disciples uh, that he himself might be glorified. So Jesus, we have here that Jesus and his disciples kind of are in transit. He decided to wait a couple of days. Oh, after the period of time, though, we know that it was about four days that had passed. And I just envision from the scriptures that this area they're traveling might have been distant. If they say two miles, might have been distance-wise from maybe Hardee's and Hampton to the Pig Blue Weekly. So that's the span of, of, time, of uh, space that we're kind of thinking of. But um, before Jesus and the disciples arrived back at the home of his friends, Martha uh, had heard that he was on the way, one of the friend, uh, sisters. So she went to meet Jesus and had a similar conversation as uh, we had heard Jesus have with Mary in our passage today. So our scripture lesson picks up after Martha's conversation with Jesus. Uh, she, after her conversation, she went back to her house, told Mary of the conversation and said that Jesus had been asking about her. So then that's where our passage today picks up. And in that passage, Mary then, of course, she went to Jesus uh, on behalf of her brother, fell sobbing at his feet, and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Well, Jesus was moved to compassion, we know the scriptures told us, um, over his friend's grief that he responded by weeping. That verse, some of the translations say, Jesus wept. When they arrived at the tomb, Jesus was still deeply moved with compassion. Uh, and Martha, who had already had that conversation, of course, she uh, sort of preempted maybe any action that he was going to do and, and reminded him that Lazarus had been dead for four days and that what he might would expect would, if, the, um, if the tomb were, were open, that it would be a stench, is what the scripture said, or there would be a smell released from the tomb. But of course, Jesus reminded her about the conversation that, that they had had. He had actually had a similar conversation with her sister and said, didn't I tell you if you believe, you will see God's glory. So the stone was removed from in front of the tomb at the request of Jesus. And then this is what happened next. Jesus thanked the Lord God for hearing his cries. We also know that Jesus came out, excuse me, Jesus called out Lazarus and Lazarus did wake up from his deathly sleep. So this is just one of my favorite passages. It's a beautiful passage, and I think it has some lessons from which we can learn. I just love this whole uh, idea of Jesus and his friends teaching us about the importance of friendship. So, but there's some lessons I think we can take um, with us about faith, about friendship, about acknowledging the Lord God and being released maybe from things that are binding us. So when we consider faith, 
Martha and Mary both believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They had confidence in his saving power and presence. They rushed to him, right? We know that from the scriptures. They believed and said, if you had been here, you wouldn't have died. They had an unshakable faith. What would happen if we exercised that type of unshakable faith? So as well as faith, I think we can learn some lessons about friendship. This passage is a reminder about the beauty of friendship. And I've said it before, we are not called or we are not expected to navigate this life alone. God doesn't intend for us for that to happen. The scriptures also told us where the, even the Jews that went to visit Mary and Martha at their home, that they comforted them after their brother's passing, and that they were even uh, crying when they went to the tomb. So if I'm quite honest with you, there have been a few times when I was hesitant to reach out in similar situations. Maybe it's just me. Because I didn't want to... To be a burden, um, and I, 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 sometimes I think that's the evil one that kind of plays on our sympathies or our insecurities. So I, I, I don't ever want to be a burden. And then, of course, what do we say in those kind of situations? But truly, what I have come to realize from my own experience, uh, it's about being present. I can't remember everything that was said by individuals when my parents passed away. Most recently, my mother, who had passed away in, um, in November of 22. But what I do remember are people that were present and how that type of support made me feel. I remember particularly at my mom's funeral, um, I, because I spoke about it uh, during, um, I, I was able, it was my honor to speak of, to, I guess, eulogize. And so I remember speaking about how my mother gave the best hugs. It just, she just gave us, it just gave you a great feel. And she extended those to anybody, anybody that came in our, in our home. Um, I remember a friend one time came in and he would like reach out. She said, we don't shake hands in this house. Give me a hug. And so she gave the best hugs. But I remember that cemetery, that the cemetery after, after a funeral, I remember people approaching me and I said, I can only accept hugs today. Um, but it was about our friends and, and, and people that loved us being present. So in our lesson from today, Jesus showed compassion for his friends. And he intervened, for, he intervened for them to the Lord God. And we can do that same thing for our friends, for one another. So in addition to uh, faith and friendship, the next lesson I think that we can take from us is acknowledging the Lord God. Uh, and this passage remind the, reminds us of the importance of acknowledging the Lord God in our actions, in and through our actions. Jesus, he thanked the Lord God for hearing his cries. What did he do? He, he asked him to open the tomb, and then it said he looked up to God, and he thanked him for hearing his cries. But we can have that same confidence of knowing that our prayers are heard as well. So as well as faith and friendship and acknowledging the Lord God, we can also learn uh, about being released from many things that are binding us. Lazarus was bound by the grave clothes, in his death after he fell asleep in death. And so Jesus called him from the tomb uh, and he broke free from those grave clothes. So today I would ask you, is there anything that is binding us or binding you or binding me from the Lord God? And if so, today's a great opportunity. I encourage all of us to ask the Lord Jesus Christ, if there are things that are binding us, let's release those. Yesterday, it was my honor to help, um, uh, Chad mentioned this earlier, it was my honor to help officiate the service of uh, Matt McCrary. I was one of um, four pastors. And, and um, so at the church, it was Pastor uh, uh, Brian Tony, and he was, um, I guess, our lead official. And then Pastor Ross Chelsea was there, and he asked about you all and extended his, uh, his well wishes. And Ross, as always, just did a beautiful job. Uh, and then also Pastor, and as well as Pastor Brian Tony, and then Pastor Tim Minchie. Uh, and then even um, Zoe's daughter, Mary Harrison, spoke. And I, I just thought, uh, after, I don't know about you all, but after those kind of events, and then my responsibility was, was the committal at the graveside. But, but after those events, I just always kind of replayed them. As the day progressed yesterday, I just kept replaying uh, that, that those events in my mind, and I just truly felt like God had ordained what had been spoken there. But as I, as I approached yesterday with some trepidation, as I think all the other pastors, they were, we were all quite honest, yesterday was a hard day, and it was a day that um, 
nobody ever wanted to happen, but nonetheless, we were there. But I felt like God was leading me to use that same passage. I used the Mary, the, the passage from Lazarus, the one that I kind of gave you a little, um, some information about, uh, about. It's the passage before we read today. It was when Martha went to, uh, was lamenting. So when Jesus responded after Martha's lament over her brother, these were his words. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though they die. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, Mac, we know Mac believed, and he now has been freed from his suffering, and, and he has now been raised perfectly whole with the Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Today, we have the honor of standing on the shoulders of the greats who have gone before us. We can hold on to beautiful memories and we can also strive to lead lives like many of um, the ones that came before us did by taking on the faithful and righteous way of living as we love God and as we love others. We know from the scriptures, if we believe, just like I've just read, if we believe, then we will one day see the glory of God like Mary, like Martha, like Lazarus, and like Mac, and also those who have gone on before us. Today, we have an opportunity to recommit ourselves to this truth as we celebrate the saints of God and renew our faith in Jesus the Christ, who they served. At this time, I'm going to lift up the names of those saints who have moved their membership to the church triumphant over the last year. I'm going to share names from both the congregation of Barnville and the congregation of Hampton, as well as a number of individuals who have had some affiliation so this is not about membership. These, this is about people that we had affiliation with. Now, I will say this. In the event that I omit uh, a name, uh, please know that it certainly is not intentional. But there will be an opportunity for you to lift up those names as well. And after I uh, complete this initial list of, of names of the saints that I lift up, then you are welcome to lift up others who may be on your hearts and minds. They're, they're, these may be saints who uh, we have recently lost or saints who are no longer with us, but remain present in our hearts always. I encourage our, well, I was about to say I encourage our friends online to place their names. We don't have friends online right now, but I'll, I'll speak that in hint. So please, uh, if you will, let's go to the Lord in prayer, be in an attitude of prayer. Our great and almighty God. In your grace, hear our gratitude for the lives of the saints who have gone on before us. For those who have finished the race, remained faithful, and have now been awarded the crown of righteousness. We lift up their names now as a remembrance and as an offering of praise and thanksgiving. Those affiliated with Vulnerable United Methodist Church, I lift up the names. Donnie M. Davis III. George Martin Harter, Libby Alexander Murdoch, Virginia Priester, Ori Vaughn Jr., Eleanor Mayfield Wright. Those affiliated with Hampton United Methodist Church, Jerry Frank Cruz. K. Harvey Elliott, Kate Padgett Freeman, Smith Smitty Gauss, Daryl Hussovitz, Geraldyn Ann Bain, Jerry Hutto, Charles Maxwell, Mac McCrary, Barbara Sheffield, Raymond Williams. At this time, I will invite you to lift up other saints with your voices who are never far from your hearts. Marvin Hull, Green Chance. Grandma Burtons. Cynthia Elizabeth Boyd. James Mann, Billy Mann. Gary Gates, Greg Jones, Bob 
Italian um, aunt and my sister Phyllis. For those that remain heavy on our hearts, even if we haven't lifted them up with our voices, we can have the confidence of knowing that the Lord God hears those names and cries from our heart. Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, we praise you and thank you for the lives of all the saints who have gone on before us. Help us to live lives that are pleasing to you, and may we follow in your footsteps and continue to stand on the shoulders of the greats who are no longer present with us in their earthly body, but who are present with you, Lord, and present in our hearts. Pour your healing power and presence of your Holy Spirit on the places in our hearts that are tender. Lord, in your grace, hear our gratitude for these lives that were well lived. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.